<laughs> uh, let's talk, I want to talk about this show in terms of what it means to people. That's why we're asking people to phone in. And uh, that's our phone number on the screen in case you want to uh, get involved in the conversation with Mr. Jessup and say, in a way, goodbye. How does it feel to know that next week you do not get up and come in here and do more shows? Bittersweet. Okay. Yeah, the getting up is, is hard and well, not that hard. <laughs> a lot of people do it. <laughs> for for all, yeah, yeah. All, uh, yeah. It's just uh, getting into the studio is a real lift. I love it. And uh, so I'll, I'll really miss that part. On the other hand, this time next week, I expect to be down around Mississippi, uh, Mississippi or down there, and I won't have to go into the studio. Yeah. So that'll be nice. Now, uh, as somebody who's been a performer their whole life, where, where do you put that performer energy? I know you're going to be doing some stage stuff. Yeah. But the bittersweet part, the bitter part, or the, or the, you know, the sad part, well, what do you do with that? I mean, do you, do, you, do you have any regrets about leaving now, or do you feel like when you leave, this whole other kind of kid show is going to start taking over? Well, I don't know. I, uh, I know that we're going to be on in reruns, uh, for one thing, and uh, I didn't want to stay around, and, uh, you know, I could have kept on going and going, but... More and more often, I forget the names of my puppets, and <laughs> I accidentally cut off my finger instead of the piece of paper, you know. So I figure it's time to quit while I'm still ahead. And you are Just still ahead. Barely ahead. Now, tell me something about how this yeah. came about in the first place. Tell people how Mr. Dressup showed up on the air in the first place. Okay, it goes back 32 years. I was here with Fred Rogers. We were doing uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and that was the first uh, time that he'd actually appeared on camera in his in his own show, although he'd done a show for years. And uh, I had made some of his puppets. He knew I was a puppeteer, and he asked me to come up here from Pittsburgh and work with him on this show for one season. And then, as planned, he went back to Pittsburgh. But he recommended me to the powers that be in the CBC Children's Department, because he knew they were going to form a new program called Butternut Square. And I was one of many characters on it. And Bruce Atwich was the ex executive producer and I think it was Bruce who came up with the name Mr. Dress Up because I was going to be somebody who dressed up a lot, as you see. I think that coat goes back 32 years, too. So anyway, that... It still it, wears well. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a neat coat. Yeah. So anyway, I started out in Butternut Square as one of several characters, and uh, then for various reasons, the uh, show changed into what's called Mr. Dress Up now. What? made it last so long? Because all kinds of people would love to think they could get a show and an idea going that could just go on and on and be universal that way. What is it that made you able to withstand all the trends, all the fads, all, all the, the new things that have happened to parenting and to children? Well, one of our early producers is here, and he'll testify that we had a very low budget. So when you got low budget, they don't seem to notice you, you know, and you just <laughs> keep going. We didn't cause any waves. We did, uh, we, we used to do uh, first three shows a day, yeah. then two, day, two shows a day, which is almost unheard of now. But if you do it that way, it, it makes the uh, overhead lower. So are you saying is you were cheap? I think that's it. Come on, that's <laughs> not it. We had a bunch of great people doing our show, too. And uh, we always have had. We've had a great uh, crew and support. Why cast, didn't you change? Why, you know, there's a lot of pressure over 27 years. Uh, to change and to, to, to start adding certain things, particularly with all the technological changes that have gone on. Why didn't you say, let's jazz it up a bit, let's get some blue screens, let's start uh, doing things fancy? Well, we didn't want to. Uh, it just wasn't our style, and for one thing, a lot of the technical stuff uh, takes extra time and money, and we quite simply didn't have it. Mm. But we didn't want it. We said we could. Sesame Street started uh, pretty much around the same time, and they were into a lot of different style of television, so we said, well, Sesame Street can do this yeah. kind of television. We'll keep the old-fashioned puppets whose mouths don't move, uh, puppets whose mouths move and make no sound, like Finnegan. That's naked and Finnegan, isn't it? Yeah, that's naked. Finnegan. The bones, the skeleton of Finnegan. <laughs> Finnegan without clothes on. No. <laughs> Frightening idea. The tickle oh. trunk you started with 30 years ago, did you not? Uh, about 30 years ago, yeah. What are you going to do with this thing now? I don't know. I think it may possibly go into the CBC uh, Broadcast Museum that's right here that in, would be a good in the Broadcasting Center. You're not going to miss dressing up? Well, I dress up every morning. <laughs> don't tell people that, here. Ernie. Don't tell <laughs> people say, that. Hi, how are you today? Not allowed I'm to fine. do that on how the are you? I'm <laughs> fine. How are you? <laughs> now, do we have Mr. Rogers on the phone right now? 
Okay, well, uh, you all know Fred Rogers, I would uh, imagine, as well as you know Mr. Dressup. And uh, Fred has joined us on phone now to say hi to Ernie, and I, I guess to say bye to Ernie. Uh, how are you, Mr. Rogers? I'm just fine. Is this Ralph? It is. That's Ralph. Hello, Ralph, and hello, Ernie. Hello, Fred. How <laughs> this are is you? wonderful. I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. Uh, I was going to send you a letter because I heard that you're making crayons now. <laughs> and I wonder if you could send me a dozen. You're certainly welcome. You, as a matter of fact, you should have the new one. It's called Blue Ribbon. And oh. if anybody deserves Blue Ribbon, it's you. <laughs> well, how about you, too? You know, you're the person that got me started here. You took me to Canada, left me on my own, and now I'm rich and famous. <laughs> Don't you remember Fred Rainsbury welcoming us there at the CBC? And, yes. And saying, uh, we've seen you talk with kids. You just get on the air. <laughs> I had never done anything except puppets and music, as you well know, yeah. before we went up there. And it was uh, thanks to him that, uh, that anybody has ever seen me. Oh. And then you took over. I always thought it was your idea that you came up. I've been telling everybody that you had this great idea whereby you would have actually appear on camera. That wasn't my idea. <laughs> but we both owe a lot to the CBC, don't we? <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> You're the only two left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, Ernie, tell me about your kids. My kids? Yes. They're fine. They're, they're all here, too. Chris and Natalie came in from California to be with me at the big party last night. Oh, good. And they'll be here for uh, a while longer. and. Uh, and Kathy and David and all the grandchildren were there last night. And uh, actually, I might drop in and see you because I'm heading south next week. Oh, please do. I'm in New York right now, but I'll be home next week. Okay. How's Joanne? Oh, she's fine. And I'd like you to meet our grandchildren. You know, uh, there's something that has kept us together, whether we were in one country or the other, all through the years. And Matt, I think there's a real dedication to children. Well, I uh, learned most of it from you, Fred, actually. Didn't he teach you to talk to one kid at a time, as opposed to, hi yeah. out there in TV land, all yeah. that? Uh, yeah, the two things. Look at the camera lens as if it were one single child. And when you're doing a puppet on television, don't wiggle around too much. Because <laughs> <laughs> they got those close up. Well, you know who <laughs> taught us that? It was Gabby Hayes. <laughs> yes, I said to him one time, I was his floor manager here at NBC, and I said, uh, Mr. Hayes, what do you think of when you look at the camera and know that there are thousands of people watching you? And he said, Freddie, I just think of one little buckaroo. <laughs> oh, that's a great story. <laughs> well, listen, Fred, we want to thank you for calling up. And oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. Do well, you have any final words for, uh, for Ernie here? Uh, the, the final word for all of us that is that we love you, Ernie. And we'll see you soon. Well, I love you too, and I'm anxious to see you. Bye, my dear. Bye bye. All right, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab a kid here, and they, they want to give you something. You want to come with me and just give, give Mr. Uh, dress up what, uh, what it is you want to give him? <laughs> you poor, shy kids, you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you terrified little kids. Oh, uh, thank you. You want to give him the heart? Show it to him? Oh, that's a heart as big as all outdoors, isn't it? <laughs> that's handsome. And, and do you have something for Mr. Dressup, or are you just going to crawl into a small space? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's a card. Do you have something in your hand? Oh, thank you, dear. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. While Ernie opens those up, we'll go to a commercial break, and we'll come back, and you can tell him if you love him, too. I think you do. Sure you do. <laughs> all right, we'll be back. This is the cutest show we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs>
Forget the referendum. Let's you're, just you're take cute too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a frightening idea. Uh, <laughs> let's take some phone calls to some people who want to talk to Ernie. Uh, let's go to Jeanette and Regina. Hi, Jeanette. Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm really nervous. Hello? I finally get to talk. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah that's you're here. You can oh. talk now. Yeah. I finally get to talk to Dress Up. I've called you that since I was four years old. Um, so what did he mean to you? Uh, a lot. I just, I was summing up everything before I got to talk to you and the influence I had of cutting up toilet paper tubes with you and drawing when you drew and dressing up when you dressed up. I took fashion design, I took art in university and now I'm an interior designer and I just want to thank you very much, Dress Up, for giving me the tools that I needed which was to use my imagination and I can make whatever I want to make because that's the basis of everything for me. Well, it's wonderful, uh, but, you know, you had the talent to begin with anyway. Well, But uh, I'm glad to hear that. Well, thank you very much, and I, I wanted to also tell you that the media is saying that you'll live on in reruns, and I just wanted to let you know that you'll live on in me as long as I live and in other kids just like me. And also that I'll never be able to throw out a, a paper tube as long as I live because they're, they make great crafts. Yeah, <laughs> right. Why should right. I design houses completely out of toilet paper rolls? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the call, Jeanette. That's, Thanks, uh, that's Jeanette. lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, let's go to Paul in Winnipeg. Hi, Paul. Oh. What do you think? What 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 does Mr. Dressup uh, mean to you? You know, you asked a question of him earlier, and you know what he has done. Mr. Dressup has brought imagination to the nation. Um, forgive me for my voice being a little raspy, uh, Mr. Coombs and Mr. Ben Murgy. Bit of a cold. Um, Understandable if you're in Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> I was there like two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, well, I, I, I remember growing up with shows like yours, and uh, does anybody remember Shea Helen? Of mm -hmm. course. And yeah. um, I, I, uh, I lost track as I grew up, but I must say that you inspired so much creativity in my, myself and my younger brother and sister. We used to always play um, Mr. Dress Up, and we had a, a, I don't know what those trunks originally really are, um, but we had one of those big kind of wooden trunks in the basement. A steamer trunk. Right. Yeah, that's what they were, yeah. And uh, they, they were, we used to put all kinds of stuff in there and dress up and it, it, what your show is so different from what's new out now, I, I really love it because it allows children to have an imagination. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's so wonderful about it. And I, I'm oh guru to you going, but I just wish you God's blessing in your life and the best of health because you've sure earned it, Mr. Coombs and Mr. Dressup. Well, it was fun all the way, Paul, so thank you. Thanks all for right. the call, Paul. Sure, thanks, bro. Bye-bye. See, Bye. this is the thing. My kids uh, watch kids' shows now, and everything is done for them. Yeah. It's all effects, you know, reboot. And you, they, you look at a kid watching a TV show now, and they're like this. They just, it's all coming at them. Yeah. But you but, just kept insisting they do something with their time. Yeah, but you know what? It just occurred to me when he said that they did all these things. What we actually did was just not lead the children. We took what children like to do anyway. Yeah and uh, just did it ourselves. But it was all things they could exactly. do. You yeah, know, I This think wasn't so, yeah. a world you were presenting to them that they could never possibly recreate. They could do this, they could just get up and start cutting paper and exactly. it would be done. Nice and simple. Low tech, isn't that the word? Low tech, Low yeah, tech. And very basic. Low tech, high touch. That's the word. <laughs> all right, let's talk to one of your producers who uh, certainly knows you from, uh, okay. from way back. Uh, which, do we have one on the phone or do we have one here? We have Don Carroll here. Um, so give me your history with Ernie. Absolute fright one day in the early butternut times, I remember. Um, we, the B shows were really good, all bathtubs. I don't know if you remember. Remember, we did bathtub and we wrote it in. It was an early show. We had to get into the, he had to get into the bathtub, fully clothed, oh, yeah. turn and say, <laughs> my gosh, I still got my clothes on. And I was so petrified in the two weeks before that went on because I was frightened to death. I'd wake up at night in a cold sweat. <laughs> I'm sure I've never told him no. that every kid in Canada would get into the bathtub <laughs> with his clothes on. And the so day came, and of course, it was fun. So, see, so he's not a bad influence, is not that what you're saying? <laughs> he could overcome anything. What's, what, why, why him? Why, why did he, he last so long? He's the best communicator teacher I've ever known, and it took me a long time. I taught high school before I knew him, and he's got no load in front of his eyes. He's straight on, and it's 
no ego, and when I taught later in tough places like Arabia and in uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, on bad days I'd go home and say, you weren't like Ernie today. You let your ego, you let your worries get in front of you. That's fabulous. That's very yeah. nice. <laughs> Thank you, Don. I hadn't seen Don for five years. The last time I saw him was in Fort Stanley, and I thought he disappeared off the face of the earth. And I got a letter from him a few weeks ago and found out that he's back in Canada, and uh, now he's here. It's so wonderful. So you, you were producing from what year to what year? Butternut Square. Mm -hmm. First year around. 64? 65. Yeah. 32 years ago. So there were the Beatles, and then there was Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> and Don. And Don. All right, let's take some calls. Ryan in Montreal. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Hello. Hi, Mr. Dressup. How are you doing, Ryan? <laughs> Good. Um, uh, I, I, I grew up with Mr. Dressup when I was a little kid, and uh, my mom has ten, had ten kids, and every wow. one of them grew up with, uh, with Mr. Dressup. And, the, and my younger sisters are both, they're still watching Mr. Dressup now and coloring, and we have a tickle trunk and everything. Great. That's families like yours, you know, that keep us on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I think that uh, Mr. Dressup's as Canadian to me as, as hockey or maple syrup or anything like that because he really, uh, he was part of, I, I feel he's, he's a part of this country. And that in a time like when the country's, you know, going through the, the turmoil that we are right now, all we have to do is look to Mr. Dressup and maybe, maybe that will, will tell us, teach us some things. All right, That's Ryan, thank talk. you for Thanks, the call. Ryan. So, like, as an American, how do you feel about that? <laughs> now, you got I used to feel very guilty, but you I'm not You got your Canadian American. citizenship in 1994. Yeah, just a couple of years ago. So this whole but time you've been an American raising generations of Canadians. Has that yeah. ever felt weird to you? Well, there's so many Canadians down in Hollywood, you know, that are just adding all kinds of great stuff to American movies, so I, I, it's only fair. Just bring you it? back as a trade-off, <laughs> yeah. huh? So how does it feel to be a Canadian now? It feels very Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> very comfortable, very nice. In fact, I, I felt Canadian from the first few years we were here, actually. I guess so, huh? I, yeah, I just I mean, felt I belonged here. your kids are Canadian, here. right? Yeah. Grandchildren. Well, actually, they're, uh, um, what do you call it, um, dual citizenship. Yeah. So they can do whatever they want. And you are going to tour across Canada, aren't you? Oh, yeah, show? I always have been, and I just keep doing it. Hmm. All right, let, let's take another call. Let's go to Sherry in Petawawa, Ontario. Sh Hi. Hi, Sherry. W um, what did Mr. Dressup do for you? Oh, well, I watched him, of course, like every other Canadian child, and uh, now I find myself, I'm 24, I have a little boy who's not quite two years old yet, and uh, I find myself sitting in front of the TV actually watching. Actually what? Did we just lose Sherry? Yeah. I think we did. Oh, that's too bad. Hello. Oh, there Hello. you are. Is that you again? Welcome back. Uh, uh, this isn't Sherry, actually. I just called oh. in the phone rang. What is this, a party line? Is that going <laughs> it must with? be something. Wait, we're at the I, cottage I, now. Anyone can get on. We don't have the technology. It yeah, really, out. apparently not. Who are you? I'm Lori. I'm calling from Espinola, Ontario. Are you calling Hello. the Van Mergie Live show? Yes. Oh, oh well, that's, that's a relief. <laughs> um, actually, I'm watching you on TV and talking at the same time. It's actually quite weird. Isn't that incredible? Uh, what would you like to say to Mr. Dressup? I just wanted to say that I grew up watching Mr. Dressup, and I have a six-year-old daughter, and she just loves Mr. Dressup. And I was explaining to her on the phone on the the other day when I heard you, Mr. Dressup was retiring, and she started to cry. Oh. And she said. Well, it's a good thing we have him on videotape because he will never retire from us. <laughs> and oh, I nice. also w wanted to say that I was watching Mr. Dressup one day and I saw a gentleman, uh, was a guest on your show, and I went to high school with him. And I thought, oh, isn't this great? Oh. Here's a guy I grew up with in high school and he's on Mr. Dressup. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, everybody comes around to our place once in a while, once in a lifetime anyway. All right, so... So you got through. I'm very happy about that. We have to say goodbye to you, all right? All right. All right, bye. Good luck, Mr. Dressup. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, all right, now bye. somebody wants to give you something. It's rough retiring, don't you think? Oh, boy. All right, now, uh, would you like to say something to Mr. Dressup? Yes, I would. Well, then go ahead. <laughs> I grew up um, watching your show. Um, we used to even watch it with our mother, and now I'm watching it with... Um, I'll hold it. <laughs> the next generation, I'm watching it with my son. And um, what I really, um, what you've given my son actually is when he watches your show, he um, loves to do the drawings after, and uh, he's now a, a real artist. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. I'm so open I'm it up. Yes, open it up. Go ahead. And um, I just wanted to say that um, 
but I hope that the uh, the love, the magic, the love and the magic and uh, creativity that you've given children will always forever remain in the heart, and that um, it carries on to the next generation. Well, it's uh, firmly in my heart, I'll tell you. Thank you for this. It's a national group hug, folks. <laughs> Simple as that. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes with Mr. Dress Up. Give us a call. Welcome back to the show. This is Ben Murgy Live. We are having a goodbye and a thank you, and we love you to Mr. Dress Up today. You know, it's one of the few times that you can actually read articles about the CBC and papers where everyone's really nice. <laughs> everyone's talking really nice, you know? Like, this was a wonderful thing that the CBC has done for the country, and I, I would have to um, add my vote to that. Now, these people work with Mr. Dress Up, and um, they've been crying for the whole show. <laughs> uh, you know? You've been crying for the whole show. I can't help it. What are you crying? I love him so much. I just think he's such a gentleman, and it's been, you know, the highlight of my career working with him. Thank goodness I got in there just in time. Yeah. He's so wonderful. Well, is the dignity in the class really? Can yes, you, really. Has serious dignity. Yes, absolutely. Not like the he's rest so of us. So special. <laughs> well, you're doing, you're doing. No, better. no, I have no, no dignity. I'm wearing the jacket. Yeah. For God's sake. Maybe that's what it is. Um, what are you going to remember most about working with him? I think just that he's such a gentleman, and uh, the makeup artist that uh, was doing his face yesterday was, com was commenting about his, uh, what, you know, he's, he is a gentleman, and he's got impeccable manners, and I think even that alone yeah. distinguishes him, you know? He's got this warm side, this uh, wonderful personality, but at heart, he's just a great human being. You know, in, in an age of cynical marketing, you know, like they, they, they make up the toy before they make up the show now with kids, yeah. with kids programming. And in an age of real aggressiveness, the gentle part of that show is still shocking to see. And you yeah. know, you know, it, it, it's it, there's something that jolts you as you flash by, and all of a sudden you yeah. just see this man talking to you gently, yes. urging yes. you on. Yes. Isn't that the wonderful part? Yeah. You're gonna miss him too, right? Oh, desperately. <laughs> How long you worked with him? Uh, since 1989. Oh. And um, we've. We've had a lot of fun. We've, uh, yeah, those script meetings. <laughs> <they were wrong. laughs> we've had we've worked with some wonderful people on the show. Everybody on the show is just terrific. Our puppeteers are just the most wonderful little characters. Now I got to ask this: What happened to Casey and Finnegan? All right, I've got to ask. Everyone wants to know. <laughs> Come on, Ernie, cough up. Oh, uh, me, well, uh, Judith retired. Judith Lawrence did Casey and Finnegan, and. She decided she had to just had to retire out to beautiful BC. So when she went, of course, Casey and Finnegan went with her because there's nobody in the world that could have done Casey and Finnegan. They were her creations and uh, really a part of her own persona. There. Now we know what happened to Casey yes. and Finnegan. I got two <laughs> letters before we even started the show today. Go say uh, like they've been kidnapped or something. <laughs> uh, do you remember anything about Mr. Dress Up? What, what do you remember the most? Well, it's, it's not memories as much as it is what he's done and really what he hasn't uh, done. Uh, with apologies to groups like the Power Rangers and different things like that that are on now. Yeah. The simplicity of the show, the lack of violence and all that kind of thing. It's a perfect antidote, and I'm glad it's going on in reruns. You know what keeps occurring to me? You, right at the beginning, you said basically we didn't have any money to get fancy with. Yeah. It's maybe not such a bad thing, huh? No, no, absolutely. Take the toys away from people, and give them real toys, and they can relax. Yeah, well, I think everybody concerned with the creation of the program at the very beginning, uh, it wasn't just that we didn't have the money, it was just because they knew what children liked and uh, how much fun they could have with stuff that they found around the house. Uh -huh. All right, now let me take a couple more calls so people can get in uh, what they want to say. Heather in Waterloo, Ontario. Hi, Heather. Hi there. Hello. Uh, what did Mr. Dress Up mean to you? Well, it's funny. Earlier when you were talking, you said that you spoke to one child when you spoke to, to the audience. Yes. Um, in my case, that was me. Um, sure. That's indicative of that interactive television of Canadian. And maybe we're all crazy, but hundreds and hundreds of Canadian children sat there talking to the television, long with Mr. Dressup and doing everything that he did. Um, and I think it's time for him to make a CD-ROM. Hey, that's well, a good idea. Actually, uh, we're talking about it. Are you really? Yeah. 
I think we should, because one child one time when I said I was thirsty poured some orange juice into their VCR. <laughs> Well, there, no, but that wouldn't that be a great thing? Because it's such an the, the, the thing about the show is it is interactive. Yeah, as soon as I understand what CD-ROMs are, we yeah, get well, to work on them. You don't have to understand. Somebody else okay, has to right, understand, right. really. I mean, it's not going to be us. Trust me. <laughs> right. All right, Heather, thank you for the call. Thank you, thank Heather. Thank you. Uh, let's, Bye -bye. let's go to uh, Crystal in Murnham, Alberta. I think it's Murnham. Crystal, you there? Hi. Hi. What did Mr. Dress-Up mean to you? Well, I've always watched him, and I'm... I, I'm 13 years old and I'm still watching him today and since I go to school I get to miss him all the time so it's kind of bad but I like to watch it and many times like when I was little you know how he uses blue sheets for water when he's doing kind of stuff with his stuffed animals I still do that I use little stuffed animals and I've always liked his stuffed animals he's had Cute little things. Oh, that's that's wonderful. It, it just brought back a memory. I can remember when I was a kid and I used to make mountains and valleys out of the uh, sheets on my bed. Yeah. And uh, you know make the. I still do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. That's for different reasons Maybe now, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right. Uh, thank you for the call. Thanks very much. Now here's something. Being a role model. Uh -huh. That's a lot of pressure. I mean, nothing can go wrong. You could never have done anything untoward out there in the world if you wanted to keep the job as a, as a robot. You want to know what I'm really like? Yeah, yeah. Do you run around the house in, in vinyl underwear? What do you do? <laughs> I want to know. No, what's it like? What's the pressure like? And, and or was it something that you took on as a responsibility you welcomed to be this kind of a role model, to have this responsibility? Well, it wasn't too hard. You don't think too much about it, actually. I mean, do you, when you go out, uh, do you think... Well, I'm not a role model, or oh, oh, <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> well, uh, no, uh, I, I would refrain from yelling at my kids in public, probably. Yeah. To the point where one time my son was taken, came out of the, uh, out of the kitchen of a restaurant in the arms of the chef, and saying, anybody belong to this child? <clears throat> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, ordinarily anybody else says, Christopher, come back here! <laughs> So you have to sort of make sure that people didn't get too jarred by you just being a human being. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Mr. Dress Up and Ernie Coombs are more or less the same person, so it's not really been very difficult. Well, that's got to be the bottom line, to be able to get up and do this for 27 years, is you couldn't, I can't imagine mustering up a, a radically different persona day after day. You really have to try impossible. to keep it you. Yeah, it yeah. would drive you crazy. So this is really you people are seeing. Really me. Yep, me. The thing was, back in the years when I smoked, though, that was the hard part. Oh, yeah? You know, oh, here comes a kid. Take my shirt. Hi, hi, how are you? Yeah. Hi, you lay, lay all you. Goodness, I've seen the light. I don't smoke. <laughs> now, how long have you quit for? Uh, I think it's been about seven years now. We well, can go back if you want, but I don't want you to. Oh, I don't want to. I just, it stinks. It's terrible. Yeah. My, my son is quitting smoking now after a bout with pneumonia, and his wife is going to quit too because yeah so uh, good luck Chris yeah, and Natalie really, that's a tough one <laughs> all right so he smoked okay <laughs> right away, the bubble I've heard the bubble pop all over the country at this very moment he smoked it <laughs> but cigarettes all right uh, do we have to take a break we do well can we fit one more in all right um, do you want to say anything to Mr. Dressa we, we hope you have a happy life Thank you very much, Kayla. It's been a very happy life so far. Thanks to people like you. She's so shy. Okay, we'll take a break. That was good, Kayla. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute with Mr. Dressup. Oh, wasn't Kayla? Let's drive over to the drawing board. A cow driving a car. So the first thing I'm going to do is plan out what my sailboat's going to look like. Skull and cross and go. Okay, here, put that on. You have a question for Mr. Dressup? Um, yeah, I was just saying that um, the reason that I like Mr. Dressup is because all the other uh, TV shows seem like they're acting, but Mr. Dressup really seemed to care. And my question was where he came up with the ideas for the show. Well, actually, it wasn't my idea. It was, uh, <laughs> it was the children's department. Uh, Fred Rainsbury and Bruce Attridge had the concept originally on Butternut Square, and I was one of many characters on Butternut Square. 
But they just knew that kids love to dress up, so they said, why not uh, have a character on the show that loves to dress up? Like you. <laughs> Does, doesn't it make you feel good? Oh. No dignity left at all. Yeah, that's what <laughs> we do bad. here on the show. Uh, somebody over here has got a question that I wouldn't mind okay. them asking, or at least a statement. A statement. Yeah. It is, it isn't Hughes. A, hi, Ernie. It hi. isn't a question. It's a statement. And I had the pleasure of being studio director for five or six years. And a point I'd like to bring up is that Ernie is a consummate actor. He's a professional actor, and he's a joy to work with as an actor first. What he's suggesting is that I'm not a nice guy after all. <laughs> <laughs> I have this great skill of of disguising it. Thanks, so Alan. It was fun working with you, too. It's been mock sincerity all along. Mock sincerity, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anybody here got, you got something to say? You got something to say? You had something to say, didn't you? Um, I'd just like to uh, thank Mr. Dress Up for, uh, like, all the great years of television he gave us, and uh, he kind of inspired me to, like, um, work hard at what I do, and I really like to thank him. Well, you're welcome. I didn't seem like much of a job at the time, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right, I got somebody here we, we should talk to. Yeah, I'm Mr. Dress Up. Hi. <laughs> Is it true that you're going into the donut business? <laughs> Where'd you hear that? Yeah, I said I'm going to start a donut shop. I'm going to have these special donuts that are just this big around, but just thin. And the inside is going to be your imagination. And you can imagine that it's a prune danish or a chicken salad sandwich. Do you think it'll work? If you put one beside a police station everywhere around the country, <laughs> yeah. the imagination part would be good. Let's take some phone calls. Okay. Let's go to Sonia in Fitzroy Harbor. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Mr. Dressup. Hi, Sonia. How are you? I'm fine. Where's Fitzroy uh, Harbor? Uh, we're just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice um, to talk to you. Oh, I just wanted to tell you that I grew up with my sisters watching, and uh, I found even when I was a teenager, and I would be off work sick, I would still watch your show all by myself. And um, now I have five children of my own. Oh. And uh, my middle son, his name's Wes, uh, we draw all the time, and he's quite good. And he says, Mommy, you're an artist. And I said, I learned everything I know from <laughs> Mr. Dressup. And uh, I find, I still, I, I cartoon, and I still, if I need oh, to fun. see a way a hand is held to hold a ball, I still learn stuff from you. And uh, you, I just think you're wonderful. Do you well, see yourself you as much. an artist? Well, I, uh, yeah. I, mean, I know, do. Well, I studied commercial art. Yeah, I was going yeah. to be one. So, uh, But no, uh, right now, I, I feel my... I consider myself a performer. That's you know, but all these people keep tax. talking about how they were seriously influenced. Oh, look at this hat on. All these people <laughs> talking about being influence. seriously influenced by, by you and your artwork. That's <laughs> like you should have the group of seven, and then they should have a Mr. Dressup exhibit at the yeah. end. Well, well, I don't think anybody can be taught to draw. People have a natural inclination, but if they watch me drawing, then it gives them the impetus to draw more, and that's how you get to be good at it. All right, thank you for the call, Sonia. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Uh, we have to move on because you only have a couple of minutes left. Let's yeah. go to Rayon in uh, Vancouver. Is Hi, it? Ernie. Hi there, Rayon. I'm uh, calling because I'm actually calling to tell you what you meant to my mother. Oh. To, uh, to my mom, you meant a half an hour of peace and quiet. <laughs> Isn't that bad? <laughs> oh, my brother and sister and myself were scrapping all the time, but uh -huh. at 10.30 in the morning, this dress up came on and... My mom had half an hour of peace and quiet while uh, we were glued to the television set. Well, I've heard that from other people, and uh, some people have said you're a great babysitter, and uh, of course I say, well, we don't like to think of ourselves as babysitters. We like the parent to watch with the child, but uh, thanks for the good thoughts. I uh, just wanted to thank you for your uh, help. <laughs> well, I guess it wasn't the most memorable thing you did. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you have something to say? Thank you for the call, Rayon. What are you going to be doing for your retirement? Well, I'm going to be doing a lot of what I'm doing right now, it looks like. And uh, I'm going to travel around, and I have a touring show I do. And also, I'm a spokesperson for Save the Children, so I'll be able to get around the country more and uh, do fundraising for them.